Hello and welcome back to the game room. You know what I love? Video games. You know what I love talking about? Games. And it seems like a lot of people these days who cover games seem to hate them. Or at least, the people who play them. Well that's not me, and that's not the 3,269 of you beautiful people checking out this video here today. Hey! Last week we did a non-Xbox 360 video, and while it did not do great, it didn't crater. So hey, thank you guys for checking that out. To the longtime viewers, thank you for sticking around. I know we're back on that Xbox 360 hype train today, but it is nice knowing that, hey, some of you guys are actually coming along for the ride. So if uh, more Xbox 360 sounds good to you, that's what we got this week. So let's check it out. There's a lot of games out there, some of which you've never even heard of. That's where I come in. My name's Luke. I've been playing games since the age of two, and I have no life. This is my game room. Alright, so this week we don't have any huge heavy hitters. I just barely missed out on possibly picking up Fatal Inertia, because one went through my local game store, but I was too late on it. Probably for the best, because once again, that is such an expensive game. But I have picked up some fairly inexpensive games here to talk about that I've heard a lot of people mention, although not everyone has mentioned them. But the first one we're going to start off with is made by Platinum Games. I want to say it came out 2012-ish, and it's got a very modern feel with it at the same time. It is still a, you know, an old school type game, and that is Anarchy Reigns. So this is really suited to more of a multiplayer experience. There is a campaign mode where you can choose one of either sides, and then I guess as you play through the campaign, you unlock alternative characters to play in multiplayer. It's more or less a gigantic beat-em-up in the vein of something like... Uh, you know, Fist of the North Star, Ken's Rage, or even a little bit of Azura's Wrath. This was made after Bayonetta, I want to say. So, in between this and Mel or maybe right after Metal Gear Rising Revengeance or in that time frame. So, before Platinum Games really started getting such a sameness, in my opinion. But it's fun. It's a fun, over-the-top action game. I think its biggest flaw, at least in the campaign mode, is the fact that it makes you go and just wander around killing enemies and redoing repeatable quests to then progress the story when really I just want to progress the story which story really makes no sense to me you choose sides either light or dark at the beginning though the light dark the light side seems like jerks but it, it, it's one of those another one of those kind of like shadow run where it's ahead of its time if this game came out nowadays it may do a heck of a lot better than it did back then just because we weren't really prepared for such a heavily, I guess, heavily implied multiplayer experience. It's almost like a hero shooter, but it's not. And what's funny is I've noticed some of the DLC is still allowing me to go in and, and purchase it. Now, this is on the 360, mind you. I have not actually gone through and hit go because I don't really, as much as I'd like to buy the Bayonetta pack for this game where you can play as Bayonetta and multiplayer, I know I'm almost never going to play the multiplayer, so I'd really just be paying $3 for nothing. But if any of you guys have noticed this, check it out. Hit the X button while you're on the screen and then go to the extra section and see if it allows you to buy it. Now it may allow me to buy it because I have a current credit card. And once that card expires, it probably will stop working. But that's kind of like the, the Xbox 360 store got so janky there at the end that it literally does make sense that they probably would just shut it off as far as the searching ability. But if this is a backwards compatible game or if it's still on the servers because you're still doing a download patch for it, it probably does allow you still to purchase it. So that's cool. Uh, if I find something that I really want to get, we'll try it. Uh, ironically... I almost waited for it on this game. I found out that, it's funny, when this game came out, it was a gigantic disappointment. And I remember it looked cool. It's It had all the hype behind it. I think it was made by the Borderlands people, and it just kind of fell flat on its face. And you know what it is? It is Aliens Colonial Marines. 
Now, this game is still dirt cheap. I was able to get Anarchy Reigns for $10. This game is still $10. And the reason why I picked it up is because it had a DLC that allegedly shows you what happens to Hicks between Aliens and Aliens 3. And I love Alien. I love Aliens. And, uh, you know, there's a new Alien movie that just came out that I've heard mixed things about. Uh, it's kind of competent, but then it falls apart at the end. And I've heard mixed things about this game. More recently, I feel like people have been coming out and saying it's not that bad. There's even things I've heard about where if you go into the code, there's like an AI fix that makes the game a whole heck of a lot better by just deleting one letter, something like that. Like the game was rushed to development. And that's why I think it got such poor reviews and such a poor reception is that when it was when it came out, it was like, what the hell is this? But playing it, popping it in, it has a lot of care to it. As a big fan of the Aliens franchise, like ironically, I've seen all of them other than the new one. I saw Alien 1, 2, 3, 4. I saw Prometheus. I saw Covenant. I haven't seen the damn Alien vs. Predators. And it's not like I've actively gone and said I have to go see these. It's just, you know, at the time, I, I went to go see them. Well, this one feels in-universe. You feel like a space marine. The actual sound effects used when you're firing the machine gun took me right into the world of Aliens. And just the fact that you're hearing about Hicks and hearing this and that, the weaponry, the aliens look like themselves... Like I've never, I haven't really played a good Aliens game that I can ever think of, to be honest. Uh, I never, I didn't pick up Alien Isolation because I'm not a big survival horror person. So for ten dollars to get this imperfect game, I was having a good enough time with it. Now it did get ridiculously hard out of nowhere, and I think that's also something that's it's wrong with it. Is there's a lot of damage spikes in it and difficulty spikes. Maybe I should have put it on easy mode. I don't know. But for $10, I, I picked up the DLC, the Hicks DLC. That was one of the things I got right at, before the store closed. And I'm, you know, maybe I'll go through it someday when I have more time. And it's just, it's it's fun. Even, just for the sound effect of the machine gun alone. Like, there's care. There's care clearly put into this game. It just, it was rushed. You can tell, you can tell in some regards that it was definitely rushed. Okay. So here's a game that I've heard recommended. I want to say this is a Metal Jesus recommendation from a long time ago. And it never really seemed all that interesting, but I, I keep coming across it. It's like a $10, $15 game. So I picked it up, and that's Mercenaries 2 uh, World in Flames. And I got to tell you, I was not really expecting much from it, but man, the beginning of the game is incredibly fun. Think of it like a GTA clone, but uh, I would imagine, now I haven't played the Saints Row, but it, uh, the Saint Row games, but I imagine it adds that over the topness element of Saints Row, because you are just going through, you can do airstrikes, the environment is completely destructible, you can get tanks, weapon, or tanks, weapons, cars, drive through hedge mazes, blowing things up real good course you get betrayed and also the the there's three characters you can choose from i picked the guy from the cover who is voice acted by peter stormare which is a guy i really like he plays vibruzzi in prison break he's one of he's the bad guy in the first john wick and he's been in some he's in until dawn so he's had a lot of video game stuff and to play as a game where i'm constantly just having Vibruzzi throw out these one-liners while he's going around gunning things down. It, it feels it feels nice. It, it's very, very cool. Over-the-top action. Really, really better than I thought it'd be. Especially for the price. If, if you like going into Grand Theft Auto and wish that you could drive a tank through a building, this game is this game will give you that. And it's kind of level-based. So between missions, you get ported back to a central locale. You eventually take over this big building. You know, I didn't get super far into it as I don't, but probably that was a cut above the rest of the games I played this week. If you pick nothing else up, that is the one that I'm going to hang my hat on. Mercenaries 2 was incredibly fun and definitely one that you should pick up if you're looking for some, nor some other cool games for the Xbox 360. All right, here's one that was a complete dud. Now, bear in mind, I probably should have done the tutorial, read the instructions, but you know me, I try and figure stuff out on at, on the fly, and I could not figure out this game for the life of me. And I'm usually pretty good at figuring it out, but I had no basis in this game, and that is Blood Bowl. 
So Blood Bowl is apparently a tabletop game, and this is basically just turning it into a video game. And I know they've made a few of these now. I, I think I even picked up Blood Bowl 3 on the PS4 or Blood Bowl 2 or... I don't know. When I originally saw it, I thought, oh, wow, this is like a Mutant League football. Not at all. And after I picked up Backbreaker and had so much fun with that football game, I'm like, well, this is a tactical game that's a football game. I gotta check this out. And I, I just... I could not. You, you seem to... You have the ability to move your entire squad, but then you get knocked out randomly. There's dice rolls that I don't understand. If you turn over the ball or get knocked down, it's a turnover, and then the other team gets to go, and yet I've seen it where the other team got to go, and they got someone knocked over, and it didn't do a turnover. You, you have to get a dice roll to see if you even pick up the ball. You throw the ball. Like, it's just... Okay. I was not feeling it, man. I was really not feeling it, which was a shame. You know, it's a cheap game. I think I picked it up for $6, which is a little underpriced. I, I think it goes for a little bit more than that, but because it is so cumbersome hard and, in my opinion, not very fun, I, I think this is not one that I would uh, recommend unless you understand the series already. You know, I'd probably hearken this to something like the video game adaptation of the, the board game Gloomhaven on the PS5, Switch, and everything. I loved that adaptation, but I also, going into that game, had already played the board game for hundreds of hours. So, I already knew everything, and in fact, going and playing the video game version corrected a few things from the board game, because that's what happens, is sometimes you'll misinterpret a rule, or you won't understand it correct correctly. So I don't know, if I played Blood Bowl, done it normally, and then gone and played the game, maybe I'd love it because it corrects some of the mistakes I had. But this is one where you need to you need to dedicate dedicate some time to learning it. You cannot just go in blind like I did, otherwise you're gonna have a horrible time. And another one that I probably should have given it more time, but I already know this game is not for me, but it might be for you. Uh, and that game is Dark Star 1 Broken Alliance. So this is a, more or less a, a, a flight sim, first person flight sim, where you're going around shooting down aliens and completing missions for some weird entity. And, you know, I just, I can never get into these. One of the things I don't like about these flight sims is I don't like it when I can't orient myself from the horizon of knowing what's up and what's down. You know, you can generally do that in ocean games. You can generally do that in games that are in, um, you know, in space, like not in space, but in a planet. Um, think of like the Star Wars Rogue Squadron games or Star Fox when you're on rails. But man, going around this and just feeling like you have no bearing, especially in first person mode, you can't even go into a third person mode. I just was not feeling it. I couldn't really figure out what I was supposed to be doing at the beginning. Now, bear in mind, I got heavily distracted. My wife had come in and was hanging out and I couldn't hear anything and I kept skipping through the menus. Uh, so I probably should have done more due diligence on that. Much like on Blood Bowl, I kind of dropped the ball on these two, but already. This is part of the reason why I'm not the hugest fan of Mario Galaxy. I do not like that s spherical movement. And I get this a lot on these type of games. And you know, when I played No Man's Sky, I didn't really enjoy the outer space things either. Because I'm always feeling like I'm just looking for a target, uh, and I, I can't find it. Star Fox Zero. I'm just constantly swerving back and forth and I don't really get I don't get much out of it but you might and it definitely is I've heard several people say it's great it's still fairly cheap as well I mean all these games I've talked about today I think the most they get up to is like twenty dollars so it's it's fairly inexpensive to pick it up so that might be one if you like those type of games check it out all right here's one that I really don't understand how it ties in to Clive Barker. Maybe it's kind of a, a, a reimagining. I probably should have looked more into how they tied it in, but that's Clive Barker's Jericho. And Jericho, I know from the story of the Bible about the walls of Jericho, but this, and Clive Barker, I think is the guy who did. But anyways, you have this big elite squad called the Jericho Squad. It reminds me a little bit of the squad from Predator. You're going into this big, impregnable, impregnable storm. And then the storm somehow lets you get into this area, and then you find these, these like visceral Lovecraftian horrors, like these crazy things with no eyes, masks on their head, drill hands, and they're coming after you. And it's, 
it's definitely a very early first person shooter on the on the 360 so it's not completely influenced as much by the the call of duties and the gears of wars it's got a little bit of its own style and it's it's enjoyable enough you have a squad you have two squads actually but you'll you'll find that you get squads that you can control where you can have them go up and then go down and it's just another, you know, trippy first-person shooter with an intriguing story and a little bit more horror-based. Definitely not my normal cup of tea, but something that, once again, I think I found this 7 to $10, something of that. I think it's gone up, you know, as these games tend to do. It might be around 20 now. But another one that is cool to have, you know, I really... As much as I got over the first-person shooter genre, I still appreciate it. And I still appreciate the older ones before everyone just started doing the same formula. Because it's funny, the, the nuance is pretty interesting about what... Like, you had a lot more diversity of the use of the genre back in 2006 than you do in 2016. And that's kind of when, when I got over it. Alright, we got a few more here. The other game that I say was probably a uh, cut above the rest along with Mercenaries 2. Actually, seeing this one, there's a couple, of, there's another one coming, but this one I really enjoyed. I love the Lord of the Rings series. I somehow just completely missed out on this one. I want to say I vaguely remember seeing it advertised or spoken about in Game Informer back in the day, but I just, I don't know, something turned me off about it or I just didn't pick it up. And that's Lord of the Rings War in the North. And this is. You know, kind of akin to uh, the Netica or the First Templar. So you get to play as one of the three characters. So you have an elven kind of healer. You have a dwarf and then you have a human. And it's a side story that takes place at the same time as the general Lord of the Rings story. So once again, kind of like the Path of Neat or not uh, Enter the Matrix or all those other games we talked about. It's another game that takes place in the universe, which is cool. Now, they have Aragorn in it at the beginning, so you meet up with Aragorn as Strider uh, at, in the town of Bree before the, the, the uh, what you call it, the hobbits show up. And so it's definitely no one's voice acting, like it's not the actual actors like there were in some of the other games. At least I don't think so. If it is, that did not sound like Vigo at all. But it, it's kind of like a uh, an RPG level-based you can go back to town, you can talk to people, so it's got a little of that Fallout or that Elder Scrolls DNA. But combat-wise was pretty damn good. It reminded me of a mix between uh, Lord of the Rings Return of the King on GameCube and then Shadows of Mordor on PS4. So this is kind of like a bridge game as far as that goes in, in how that is. You always have the three guys together. So the elf, the dwarf, and the human are always walking in a party. And you build up a combo system. There is slow down to executions, which are a lot of fun. As well as there's a multiplayer mode. I don't believe the multiplayer is co-op though, unless they do a split screen. If they do, I, I, I didn't have a thing to test it on. But there is multiplayer, so that might have been an online multiplayer situation. And it's got care. It's got the care of the Lord of the Rings universe in it. This is nothing like Gollum or, or Rings of Power. Like, this was made by someone who actually respected the universe, and you can tell. And it's interesting. It's interesting to hear about it. Uh, early on, you see the Witch King meeting up with the Big Bad in this game. And, you know, the North is not really touched on. I enjoy these type of things when they're done well. If it's a supplemental story that kind of goes... It coincides, though, it's... it. You gotta be careful. Sometimes it can feel like a complete waste of time. Uh, so, but this one, this one seems good. You know, this one was enjoyable enough. Uh, it's got a leveling system, got abilities, and the fact that you can have the time slow down and do beheadings of orcs is always an enjoyable thing. And really, really had a good time with this one, too. So, like I said, this is another one that was a cut above the rest. And I also think it's getting up there, too. I mean, I picked it up. I want to say I found this for like $10, $12, but I think it's closer to $20 now. But I could be wrong. And then this is a game that I've seen all the time, but I never hear anything about it. And I think I saw From the Void mention it, or somebody mentioned it, where they just talked about it and said it was a lot of fun. I'm like, okay, I, I see it all the time for $7, $8, I'll pick it up. And that's Prototype. 
And I gotta tell you, this game is really damn stupid fun. It reminds me a lot of Infamous without the polish or the storyline of an Infamous. In this game, you wake up as some dude in the morgue, and then they have you going and they show this big zombie apocalypse where these, these soldiers are gunning down the zombies and then they gun down the survivors and then you show up and you have the ability to kind of have almost like a symbiote coming out of you that can turn into a shield or turn into a knife or turn into a big fist like the Hulk and you can also consume people so you can basically assimilate them to you and then you can disguise yourself as them and it's a really wonky way to start start the story because in my opinion, they do themselves a disservice. Instead of having the game build in intensity as you get these abilities and have, you know, get more and more fun as the game goes along, it feels like the game didn't trust itself because it is kind of ho-hum at the beginning. Until you get these abilities, you are just doing standard punches and kicks and things of that nature. So they more or less have you start the game 18 days into the game where you have all your abilities. So you're going through these giant crowds, you're slicing people down the middle, you're blowing up tanks, you're throwing things at helicopters. It's super, super fun. It's really, really cool. But then it kicks you back to the beginning of the game where you have none of that. And you gotta be very careful when you do this because it, it suddenly then made me feel like, okay, well, I can't wait until I get the fun stuff. And it, it kind of made it feel a little bit of a slog instead of it being, wow, this is really cool. I can disguise myself as people. Oh, this is like, it almost like it, it, it did the cardinal sin of making you think this was God of War and then depowering you and then you're just chasing that hive like, okay, well, when am I going to get these fun abilities? Or did it allow me to use those abilities on unlimited status and then they're really just a cooldown? So that was a little bit of a downer, but still a really fun game and a really stupid cheap game that I would recommend checking out. And there is a sequel too. And ironically, the sequel is even cheaper. You don't usually see that. And I have picked up the sequel as well. Uh, maybe we'll check that out next week. All right, this one, because I just was running out of time this week, I wanted to throw in a few easy ones. And yeah, you know what? We're going we're gonna to get some gimmies in here. And one that if you don't have, I just, you know, you should pick it up. Portal 2. So this is the incredibly cool follow-up to the original Portal. Portal was one of those games where it kind of got big by word of mouth, and I almost feel like more people know of Portal, knew about the Companion Cube, but never actually played it. I'd be one of them. So when Portal 2 came out, it was like, okay, I've heard the hype, let's check it out. And man, did it not disappoint. It is one of the coolest concepts for a puzzle game that I've ever seen, almost to the point where I would not want to label it a puzzle game because I feel like calling it a puzzle game does it a disservice. As well as there is a completely separate uh, co-op mode that I never got around to playing, but is incredibly fun as well because you can do it with a buddy. Now they have re-released Portal 2 on modern consoles. I know it's on the Switch. I'm sure it's on the PS5 in the series, but just one that you know, I, I like playing things on the original systems when I do, especially around these later ports. It seems like a lot of the remasters and things of that nature sometimes downgrade it or aren't done with all the care in the world or get changed. So yeah, especially as cheap as it is, this is another game like $5. All right, then the last one, I've talked about an Assassin's Creed game before. Ironically, I thought there were only seven Assassin's Creeds on the Xbox 360. Technically, there are eight. The one of them was download only, but that's so that's not the one we're talking about. We're talking about the last one to be released, and that's Assassin's Creed Rogue. So unlike almost all the other Assassin's Creed's game, this one's big hook is the fact that you are playing as a Templar. Now it plays just like all the other Assassin's Creeds. It's around the same. I think this is the one that came out the same day as Unity. So originally I thought it was the one that came out the same day as Black Flag. Black Flag came out the same day as Liberation. And that's the one that, ironically, I thought had never been off the Vita, but it came in something called the Assassin's Creed America's Collection, which is on disc if you get the PS3 version, but for the Xbox 360, it's only a download code. And that's why I picked up the Assassin's Creed 3 remaster for the Switch, because it had Liberation on disc. But anyways, now you know about my crazy collecting. But yeah, 
Rogue is just a fun one to pick up. It, before it got re-released recently as well, I feel like no one talked about this game. It and Liberation were kind of the two black sheeps of the families just because they really, I mean, this is like Ubisoft was sitting high on the hog with this series for a while. It was the counterpunch to Call of Duty. And now we, uh, I mean, we don't have to get into it. It's definitely fallen off severely. I mean, Shadows just doesn't look that interesting. Mirage didn't look that interesting. I'll probably pick them up someday. Just like I picked up Unity and Syndicate and Valhalla and Origins and Odyssey and my goodness. But if you want one that plays like the older games before they got so much more heavily RPG-like, check out Assassin's Creed Rogue because it was the uh, officially the last physical one to come out on the 360 and it's a unique take on uh, the usual formula and they're fun games like i know that they're stealth games i can tell you i never once played a single one of them as a stealth game i just went in and did balls to the wall combat the only time you're doing stealth is when you're going in and assassinating someone which for the most part is you know they they, they don't got very good range they can't see you coming but yes, there you go, guys. There is another 10 games, especially these ones are not going to break the bank by a long shot. I think the most expensive one on this gets up like $25, $30. So if you thought I talked about too many expensive ones, hey, these are some cheapos. And you know, the, the, the market has fallen severely on some of these games. So that's nice. In my opinion, that's a good thing. It's nice to see them being back down to kind of normalish prices. But they're going to keep creeping up. They, they always are. At least that's that's what seems to happen. I don't know. Is this going to be the first system that doesn't do that? It'd be nice. I'd love to get all these things for $5. Like I always say, I can care less about the value of my games. I want the volume of games. I want all the games. But yeah, let me know what you thought about these games. Let me know if you have any more suggestions for 360 games. Like I say, I am scraping the bottom of the barrel on some of these pickups. I've really run out of things that I'm super interested in. Uh, I mean, heck, we, we've covered close to 200 games now on what? This is video number 15, 16, I think, of the 360. But, you know, I still got, like I say, I, every time I say I got one or two more, I buy a handful of more games. So we'll see how long we can keep this going. But anyways, as a reminder, I release a new video every Tuesday. It's been so nice getting a hold of you. Take care. Mm -hmm.